Welcome to the Canon R6 Mark II Complete Camera Guide. My name is John Gringo, and I've got a great class in store for you on this awesome camera. We're gonna be going through all the controls and functions of the camera. I'm gonna be taking you through the entire menu system, showing what things do, recommendations on how to get it set up. And by the time you're done with this class, you are gonna be an expert in how to use this camera, and you're gonna really know how to make the most of what you have here. Now, if you're new to these type of classes, let me kind of tell you what we're gonna be doing in here. First off, I start with a little intro to let you know a little bit more about the camera. Then we're gonna get into a few camera basics. We got some new people along watching, so we wanna make sure that they're up to speed, but there's also some important things in there as well. Then we start getting into the really good sections like exposure controls, everything for controlling your exposure. There's a lot of new things in this camera in the focus control, so that's gonna be a very important section. We're gonna do capture controls. This is the new name for the section that used to be called drive settings about intervalometer and drive settings and so forth. We'll take a tour of the camera, looking at all the buttons and dials to see what they do. We'll look at the different options for the viewfinder and monitor. We're gonna go through the quick menu. This is a nice area for making quick changes to a lot of the most important functions. We have a fairly large section on movie shooting. There's a lot of technical things going on here that are interesting. We'll look at all the camera connections and look at the devices that you can hook up to the camera. We'll take a brief tour through the lenses to talk about what the available options are and things to keep in mind. And then the rest of the class is gonna be going through the menu section. So we're gonna go through each tab and each item, giving you recommendations. And then at the end, we're gonna do a field setup guide where I show you how I would set the camera up for a variety of different types of situations. And so really gonna cover a very, very wide stretch of what this camera can do. It's gonna really help you out understanding how to set it up for yourself, how to get it customized. There's gonna be a lot of demos where I show you how to get things really set the way that you might want them. So that's what this class is all about right here. As we go through the class, I'm gonna be giving you some menu reference boxes, and these are gonna be shortcuts to where in the menu you need to go to to make a change. And so I'll tell you about oh, you can turn this thing on and off, and then I'm gonna show you where you can do it, and it's up to you whether you wanna stop the video and go ahead and make that adjustment, or you wanna not do it, and just wait till later on in the class when we get to the menu section, and we'll go through that section again. Now, later on in the class, I might be referring back to earlier sections where I fully explain something. I try to only explain things once, there's a few times I avoid that, but I generally only try to explain things once thoroughly. And so if you wanna go back to an earlier section, I'll give you a little hint as to where you can go find more information about that. So keep that in mind as we go through the class. Now, something else that is very helpful is the printed PDF. Now you can use this uh, in electronic format on a tablet or on your computer. And what this is, is it's a couple of things. Uh, first off, it's a complete menu of the class or of the camera and I've laid it all out. Now, back in the old days, I used to be able to put it all on one page, but now because the menus are so large, they go off of uh, several pages now. And in here, I give you all the settings so that you can see the whole layout of the menu. I also give you some starting recommendations for where I would set the camera for particular features. Now, I know that everyone likes to do their own thing, so I have it in here a second time without my recommendations on it, so that you can put in your own notes and settings and things that you want. Also in here are gonna be other information that we get to later on in the class about field setups um, and some other more complicated diagrams that you may wanna have printed out. And so this can be a handy item to have going along watching the class. And so if you wanna print it out or have it available on your computer or tablet or phone or whatever you want, this can be something else that I think will be helpful for many people understanding their camera and really learning about what's everywhere on the camera. Now this class is obviously on the Canon EOS R6 Mark II, and that's the priority is teaching how this camera works. If you wanna be a great photographer and take great photographs, understanding how your camera works is a really important part of it, but there's a whole lot of other things, like composition and lighting and well, it go, the list goes on and on, and we just don't have time to discuss that in here. So we're gonna, really gonna be focusing on just what this camera does. Also, this camera connects up with a lot of other things, computers and flash units, and we don't have time in this class 
to go through how to connect up and hook up to all those other things. We're going to talk about a few of the most important things in here, but it's really strictly on how this camera operates. Now, my particular bent on photography is I like being able to do things manually. I'm interested in some of the automated things that the camera can do, and we'll talk about those. But I want to teach you how to set things up so that you can repeat them and do them again and again because you understand how they're going to work. And so that's where we're going to spend a lot of time is understanding how to manually set the camera up to do certain things. Finally, I don't know how much you know. I know some of you are serious and you're really smart and you've been in photography for a long time. And some of you are also kind of new and you have basic questions. And well, this is a class and I'm the teacher and I'm supposed to teach stuff. And so I'm going to teach a lot of stuff. Um, and so I'm going to cover some of the basics and I'm going to cover more of the advanced stuff and different people are going to get different things that they want out of this class. I'm not going to spend too much time on the basics, but every once in a while I do need to cover those in here. Now the camera comes with a fairly hefty instruction manual which still has a lot of valuable information beyond what I'm able to do in this class. In this class, I'm trying to cover, I don't know, maybe 95% of the uh, operation of the camera for 95% of the users uh, for 95% of the time. It's, uh, the instruction manual still has a few useful things in there, some detailed specifications. There's uh, some compatibility issues about certain features not working with other features. Uh, this camera has a number of things where if you turn this thing on, these other five things don't work. And the instruction manual might have some more information on that than I have time and am able to put into this class. And so there are still some things that you might want to peruse through there, although I'm going to try to cover all the most important things here in the class. Now, for those of you who might be new to Canon, well, Canon is one of the most legendary names in photography. They've been producing cameras for, well, close to 100 years. They have a great history. They have a lot of different lens mounts. And that's one of the things I wanted to uh, illustrate here is they've had a lot of different camera systems and lens mounts, and it's evolved over time. And now this new mirrorless system is where they are definitely putting a lot of their efforts these days, and we're seeing a lot of great results. So let's look at where Canon is today, at least as far as the recording of this class. They have mirrorless cameras with full frame sensors, which is where the R6 Mark II fits in. And this is really the heart and soul of what they're working on right now. This is where they're coming out with the most number of cameras and the most number of lenses. It's really it's what it's all focused about right now with Canon. Now, they do make a crop frame version with this RF mount, and they have a few cameras in that category. And it's going to be growing. And if it's like their previous EF system, well, it's always going to be a junior system where there's not as many options when it comes to lenses and features and so forth when it comes to the cameras. And it's kind of a starter level, or in some cases, it's a nice crop camera for people shooting sports and wildlife photography. There's some very good cameras in there, but they tend not to be as high end as the full frame camera. Now, in a strange, weird way, there is a completely parallel universe in the crop frame mirrorless world where Canon has another lens mount, the EFM lens mount. And this was uh, designed well before the RF mount. And this was just designed for compact, small, easy to use cameras, but still having interchangeable lenses. And it appears at this time that they're not putting much effort into that EFM mount at this point. And it's something they might phase out in the long term, or they might just keep it as a niche product. But the thing to remember is there is no cross compatibility between the lenses and the bodies between the RF mount and the EFM mount. They're just different things. Now, Canon, I don't know if they're making, but they're still selling DSLRs. The full frame DSLRs were kind of the mainstream for Canon for about 20 years before the RF mount kind of took over. And they had crop frame versions of those cameras as well. And there are still many available. There is tons of them out on the used market, of course. But it is something that Canon is not putting new resources in. We haven't seen any new cameras or new lenses in about three or four years for this EF mount. So it is something that is just fading quietly into the night. Now, when it comes to lenses, there is a good number of RF lenses. But that number is rapidly growing. It's a new collection that Canon is working on to really grow. And so 
we're still seeing a lot of new introductions of brand new focal lengths that we don't have any lenses for at all at this point. There are special RF S lenses that work for the crop frame mirrorless cameras. Uh, you can put them on the full frame camera like this, albeit you're going to get a crop image and you're not going to get the full number of megapixels, but they do fit and they do work on there. And we'll talk a little bit more about this in the lens section of this class. And then once again, in that parallel universe, the EFM mount, they have their own EFM lenses. And those EFM lenses do not work on this camera or the EF cameras or really pretty much anything else. They're kind of a, just a separate entity unto themselves. And so you don't want to get those mixed up thinking that they're going to work on this camera. All right, so this is part of what I would call the six series from Canon. It has nothing to do with being the sixth in line or anything like that. Um, understanding Canon's numbering system, you need to know one thing, and that is the number one is the most important number to Canon. And for a while, they were just naming all of their products in all their different categories with a number one. And they kind of used up the number one in a lot of ways. And so they went to another number, five. And so the five series has been very popular. And they wanted something that was just a step down from five. And of course, that's number six. The six series, in my mind, has always been kind of the baseline full frame Canon camera that gives you a good solid camera. It's uh, the type of camera, if you were a professional photographer, you could live with and work with for almost anything you do. It's not the greatest camera in the world, but it does everything pretty darn well. And that's what this one is. It is kind of a jack of all trades. It doesn't really specialize in portrait or sports photography or wildlife or landscape work, but pretty much anyone who does those things would be happy with this particular camera. Um, this one, of course, at this point in time has all the latest features, so that's kind of extra nice. But it's always been just kind of a good, solid camera, and it's not one that really seems like oh, they stripped a lot of things out of it to give it a better price point. It's one that seems to be pretty full featured. It's not kind of over the top, but it's a good solid model. Now, the uh, number of megapixels the 6 Series has, has has kind of bumped up and down, kind of in a strange way, but it gives you enough megapixels to do professional quality work for a lot of different types of systems. Now, the drive rate, how fast you can shoot from one shot to the next, has slowly been increasing, and now with electronic shutters, it can go even faster, although there's a lot of caveats to that that we'll talk about in the capture controls section. Video has gotten better. We'll talk more about this in the video section. Uh, and so we're able to shoot at higher resolutions at faster rates, and that just keeps improving. The focusing system is also improved. We'll talk about that more in the focusing section. And there's always something new they're adding in. And on this particular camera, there isn't really one big highlight that makes it better than the original R6 in my mind. There are about more than 70 different upgrades. And there are little things that, you know, you might talk about the viewfinder and uh, monitor options. But when you get into the custom settings, when you get into the details of the menu, you start realizing, oh, it's got this and it's got that. And oh, it's got all these extra little things. And so it's, uh, it's done a lot more with just little items in there. So it's not one big thing that's different, but lots of little things. All right, let's talk about the care and handling of this particular camera. Like all cameras, you get pages and pages of warning in the instruction manual. First off, yep, it's not waterproof. Don't go underwater with it. If you're going to shoot out in the rain with it, yeah, uh, it has some weatherproofing and can handle that for a little bit, but I would probably get a rain cover if it's going to get really wet. Use only specific power sources. And so we're, they're talking about Canon batteries and Canon accessories if you're going to have AC power running to the camera. And I would agree with Canon. Uh, there are some other manufacturers that do make products that work in there. They're never as good as Canon's. They tend not to last as long. They can have problems. And you can mess up a lot of things if you don't have the right power source. And in general, I do recommend Canon accessories. I like working with Canon flashes. If you're looking to do TTL flash, I just like the interface of working with the same brand. There are a huge number of flashes that you can use if you're doing studio strobes and you're just doing manual output, then the world's open to you. As far as lenses go, 
Yeah, Canon makes great lenses. They have a closed lens mount right now where they're not allowing any other manufacturers to make autofocus lenses. And we, we're all hoping that changes because I think uh, being able to add on a variety of lenses is great. That doesn't do any damage to the camera. There are sometimes features that may not work as far as some of the image correction features, but for the most part, it would be great to be able to add on different lenses. And there are some that you can get, especially with adapters. There's always a lot of goofy things in there. Um, one of my favorite is don't allow object to hit the lens. And so don't let people throw baseballs at your lens. And so very important to know about your camera. Now, as far as the construction, it's got a magnesium alloy inner structure, and then it's got a lot of, well, high-end plastics on the outside. And it generally feels good in the hand. It's well-made. It's not designed for dropping, but it's made just about as well as most other cameras, not quite as good as some of the high-end professional ones. Now, specifically on the weather sealing, they do say it is designed to be dust and drip resistant. So we're talking about light rain and dust is not designed to get inside. And so there's a lot of rubber seals to keep all that stuff out. It should work in some pretty low temperatures and high temperatures. And so should be pretty good. But once again, on a heavy rain, if you're going to be out shooting a football match or something like that, I would get a rain cover for this. Now the shutter life on this, I have been getting some, some differing uh, numbers on the shutter cycle rating. And the best number that I can find is 400,000. Not that it's the highest number, but the most accurate number is 400,000. But the number for the previous R6 I was getting was 300,000. And it's conceivably possible that I either got this one wrong or I got the previous wrong because I haven't seen Canon talk about an improved shutter system in here. I don't know, maybe they made some quiet changes. It's got a longer life and they're not saying anything about it. Maybe I just made a mistake, but in general, this is going to have a good long life for general shooting for most people. All right, let's make sure that your camera and my camera is ready for this class. We're going to be shooting some test photos. We're going to be playing with the camera, going through the menu system. So we want to make sure everything's working right. You're going to need to have a charge battery. You're going to need a lens on the camera so we can take photos. You need at least one memory card in the camera. It can go in either slot. There's slot one and two. It doesn't really matter. Turn the camera on, which is what I'm going to do right now. And on the side of your lens is an autofocus switch. And you're going to want to make sure that this is in the autofocus position if you want the camera to automatically focus. This is the master control for controlling focus. And you kind of have to remember that is it is a physical switch on the lens that you need to adjust. And then on the top of the camera, we have a mode dial, and while it pains me to say this, just put it in the A plus mode, which is the fully automatic mode, and press down on the shutter release to see if your camera shoots a photo, which is what I will do right now. So I have it in the A plus mode, press down, it gives me the little beep beep, which means it's in focus, and I take a photo, and yes, it is working properly if your camera uh, needs a memory card or a battery charge, now's a good time to go take care of that. All right, one of the most important things in a digital camera is the firmware, which runs all these software operations on the camera. Now, as of the filming of this class, my camera is at version 1.1.1, which means they've had a modest and a very light upgrade of some sort since they came out with the camera. Now you can check this out by diving into the menu system and looking into the setup menu number six under firmware and seeing what version you have. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we find this on our cameras. And so we can use our little joystick to scroll around different pages. We can use the top dial. We can use the back dial to go around. And so if you come all the way over to the wrench, and we're going to go to page six on the wrench right there. We do not, well actually we do see it right down here at the bottom, firmware. Now it's going to appear a little bit different when you're in the A plus mode versus some of the more manual modes. So if I switch it over to program and come back into the menu, you'll see that we have a longer list here. And that's generally where we're going to be for most of the class. But if you come down to page six and look at the firmware, you can see which version you have there. You can press set to see a little bit more information because there's also firmware for the lens. We're not going to worry about that for the moment. But 
version 1.1.1. Now, if you have anything less than this, or you're watching this class in the future, which you all will be, uh, it's possible that Canon is gonna come out with new firmware that fixes bugs, adds features, makes the performance a little bit better, or does something else. And so it's worthwhile checking from time to time, maybe once or twice a year with Canon to see, is there a new firmware for my camera? Because then you can upload it. Now, the way that you upload it is you need to go to Canon's website, download the new firmware for your camera, and then put that file onto a memory card, put the memory card in the camera, come right here into the firmware options, and the camera will recognize that there's new firmware, ask you if you want to update, and then it will spend probably three to five minutes updating the software on the camera. Then you reformat the memory card, and you've got the new fancy firmware to run your camera. And so that's a good option from time to time. As I say, once or twice a year, you might want to check in. All right, next up, camera reset. So you may have, and I definitely have been playing with this camera a lot, and I've been making a lot of changes and customizations, and ooh, I want the camera to work this way. And if you want, this is totally optional, to reset your camera back to the factory default settings, I'm gonna do it because we got people watching this class who are taking their camera right out of the camera box right now. And so I want my camera to act like a brand new normal camera. So I'm gonna go through a camera reset. So you can dive into the setup menu to do this. And there's a number of different options. The first option is basic settings. And this is just kind of your regular everyday shooting type settings that it's gonna reset. But if you go into other settings, there are all sorts of things that you can reset in there. And you can kind of target what you want to reset in there. Now, you'll also see these same resets, or at least a couple of them, when you go into the custom functions. And this will allow you to reset all the custom functions that you've set in the camera, or reset all the button and dial customizing that you've done. Now, as I say, as I've been getting ready for this class, I've been messing with this camera a lot. So let's go ahead and get this thing reset back to the factory default setting. So we're gonna dive into the menu. And in this particular case, we're gonna to need to stay on page six and come right up to the top of it, reset camera. And I'll go ahead and reset the basic settings just to do a basic one. I'm gonna dive back into the menu and you can see it kicks me over to page one. So I'm gonna use this uh, top dial to scroll my way over to page six and I'm gonna go into reset camera and other settings. Now, all of all these different ones down here, I've been playing with a few things and not everything, so we're not gonna worry about everything. And so I'm gonna customize the quick controls. That's the quick screen. Uh, shooting info I might have been playing with. I haven't been working in the root certificate and communication settings, so I'm gonna leave those. Uh, nor that, uh, I haven't done that. Custom controls, I love playing with those. We'll do more of that in this class. And any sort of the custom functions that we've set on the camera, and we'll clear out my menu as well too. So now my camera should be back to pretty much normal in this case, and so everything should appear kind of as it does right when you take the camera out of the box. So working with a, a fresh product, you might say here. So if you wanna do that, go ahead and take care of that at this time. All right, that's just the introduction. We're just getting started, so there is a lot more to go in here. We'll see you in the next section.